Many know her as the queen of R&B. She's considered one of Canada's greatest singers. For over two decades, Julie Black has been instrumental in growing Canadian hip-hop and R&B. Her lasting success has inspired and uplifted fans, and she's become a leading voice for black Canadians. Then, at the NBA All-Star Game, on one of the world's biggest stages, she used her platform to send a message to all Canadians by singing these words. Our home on a native land. Black's small but impactful tweet to O Canada made international headlines, stirring up conversation about whether her rendition should be made official. We are experiencing life on Native land, on Indigenous land. She was honoured by the Assembly of First Nations and celebrated for her alliance to the Indigenous community. I recently sat down with Julie Black to talk about her experience. I know enough about you to know that this didn't come just as a whim, mm -hmm. that you are close to people in the Indigenous community. Yes. And you had a discussion, and that's what prompted action. Yeah, well, it actually flipped around. So I got, I woke with the feeling of how do I make this moment meaningful? How do I make this opportunity um, impactful for all of Canada? Like, I'm representing Canada. To me, it's like the Olympics of anthems. <laughs> I'm representing Canada on the world stage. And so when that, when it dawned on me, like, oh, okay, I went through, I went through the anthem word for word. And I'm like, okay, it just didn't feel right. And I followed the feeling. And then, you know, there's appropriation and there's appreciation. So that's when I, I contacted a few of my friends who are indigenous. And so, but getting their blessing is what made me go through with it because had had I not received their blessing it would have been it would have felt self-serving mm. you perform it a lot of people hear it mm -hmm. and a lot of people start talking about it and that includes within the indigenous community within the assembly of first nations which then holds this special chiefs assembly at which you're honored mm -hmm. an emotional event for you Even now, I'm holding tears. Emotional, spiritual, bridge building, healing. It was all the things that I've, I've needed for myself, for the little girl, Julie, Julianne Indira Gordon. Because being, especially being an R&B singer and being a black woman in this country, born and raised, my experience is, has been, okay, I've done this, what's next? Like, I was inducted into Walk of Fame, okay, what's next? It's almost like, okay, what's next? It never felt like anything was ever enough. And they, they just gave me, they gave me permission to know that I'm enough. I can see the emotion now. Yeah. yeah, I'm enough. I matter. You said during that ceremony, on behalf of the black community, mm -hmm. we are one. We're better together. Tell me about that. So many years ago, I heard this term BIPOC. And whoever invented the term, okay, whatever, black indigenous people of color. I recognize that I've been going through life, kind of walking down this, it's like, we're, it's like if, you, if you envision like the lanes of a, of a track and we're, we're running against each other, we're supposed to be really running on the same team, but this whole BIPOC thing is like we're running against each other. And so that's why in that moment, I'm so happy I, I, it dawned on me to say it as an audible. If I don't live to see reparations for black people, I can live to see and help and support be a part of the change for indigenous peoples and feel just as fulfilled. Because at the end of the day, I am not feeling the plight of my ancestors in real time right now. Mm -hmm. But I have indigenous friends who know people that don't have clean water, like right now. You've spoken about indigenous rights for a long time. Mm -hmm. I go back to um, 2018. Canada Reads, mm. you were defending the Marrow Thieves yeah. uh, by Indigenous author Sherry Demoline. If I can, mm -hmm. I want to show you that defense. Oh, wow. You actually have it. Yeah. Oh, wow. You hit play. 
Oh my goodness, you guys really didn't get me here. Waking up this morning and seeing on the news that um, Pope Francis decided not to apologize to Canadian Indigenous people for the residential schools when in 2015 they apologized to the American Indigenous people. Like, it's this, this is real life. You know, I don't, it's a show and mm. you know, all the books are amazing, but I, re I remember being a uh, youth that was seen and not heard. <sighs> and, um, you know, my mom worked for $1.65 an hour here in Canada and made life for all her kids. And for me to be here and be able to represent a community um, that simply wants a conversation to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a big deal for Canada, man. My mom chose Canada. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> My mom chose Canada. Thank you for sharing that. Your mom's not with us anymore. Yeah. Not physically. No. So tell me <laughs> what, what she is inside you that has made you the person who advocates, who knows marginalized communities and has continued to struggle and, and fight for those communities. Yeah, my mom taught me forgiveness. First and foremost, it's the gateway to freedom. And without that, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have enough love available to want to be on the front line, to want to take on this role or this. You know, my mom would say, like, the mantle is open. There's a mantle for you. Just step on it. Step up. She didn't let shame stop her. And that's what she taught me, to shame the shame. You know, so I had to go through it. I'm still going through it now in therapy and to really heal the little girl and talk about my experiences, talk about surviving child sexual abuse, talking about mom raising us as a single parent, you know. But I share it, I share it in my keynotes, I'll share it on television, I'll share it anywhere. Because I really want, my, my history doesn't have to be my destiny. Hmm. Like, why not speak positively when we can? We have it available to us. And so that's how she lives through me every single day. This conversation that you've brought to the fore, mm -hmm. If that actually resulted in change, we all sang the anthem as you sang the anthem, what would that mean to you? I'm still sitting with that. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, in this moment, it wouldn't mean anything for me, but it would mean something to me that they're listening. But for it to be a legitimate conversation that's truth telling, that's huge for the generation coming up because they'll they'll know that to be the truth mm -hmm. and learn that. And so I think it's important that it, it resonates. It's, it is, we are on native land, like that's, we are on indigenous land. If I could have changed two words, I would have done home on indigenous land. But you know, you choose which one would be to me the most impactful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm not here to wave my wand and be like, if you don't do this, then you're wrong. You know, I, it, it took 45 years to be 45 years old and so, I'm, I'm sitting in my, in my maturity and wanting to learn more about indigenous peoples.